No nonsense gin drinking. All gin, no nonsense. Hello gin lovers, welcome back. I'm Bobby Freeman and today my friends, we have a almost brand new gin company for you because on this show, we always talk about gins that were conceived first made in 1800s or 1902 or something. Well, this little fellow is a veritable fetus of a gin because the company was founded in 2017. So my friends, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to McLean's Something Blue Gin. And ironically, I think the Something Blue is gonna be my hands before them because it's so cold in the studio today. For some it's May the 5th now. For some reason, summer is refusing to kick in in the UK. So I'm gonna try and crack on with the video, get a bit of energy so I can warm up. But before we get stuck in, my friends, I have to thank yet another one of my subscribers who has joined my Patreon. So, Mr. Bailey Davies, thank you very much. You are an official supporter of the show. You are a gentleman and I salute you. So as I said, it's a very, very young gin. And as a consequence, a lot of my subscribers, because this is watched all over the world, people from all around the globe watch, I, I've no idea why, I'm just a strange man talking about gin in my garage, but people do watch it for some reason all over the world. So I feel a bit bad sometimes speaking about gin that you probably, a lot of people won't be able to get hold of. But I think it's kind of interesting occasionally to have a look at something new, something that's sort of probably gonna be getting to you sort of at some point. So I'll give you some idea of, uh, good Lord, that's a big gabbling speech, isn't it? But you know, give you some, sort of idea of um, what's coming your way in the future and to look out for it. Well, that's my theory anyway, but let's have a look about what they say about, have a look about what they say about, have a look what they say about it on the website shall we? And because this is yet another Scottish gin, despite me blaming, I'm not sure I haven't got any sort of a scientific basis for this, but I do blame the Scottish accent, my Scottish accent, for destroying my throat the other day. But you know what? I suffer for my art, so I'm going to Bloody well, do it anyway. In the summer of 2017, McLean's Gin began producing bespoke gin made to order on a bottle by bottle basis. Now listen to this. From a converted storage cupboard of our one bedroom flat. So they made the gin. I don't know if, if, if people in America can understand my Scottish accent. Though. I should put some subtitles, shouldn't I? They were making gin from a cupboard in their flat. I think that's just absolutely awesome. I, I, I wish, I think more gin should be made from covered in flats, god damn it. Fast forward to now, we're producing the same gin as well as five others and the occasional one off in batches of no more than 50 litres from our purpose-built gin lab on the edge of the charming village of St Strath. Strathaven. It may be Strathaven. I don't know. I thought I'd go for both and I've covered all the bases then. You know what I mean, man? Okay, I'm going to drop the accent for a bit because the throat feels okay at the moment. I don't want to push it. However, there was one more bit I wanted to tell you and that is... It, it, it is... <laughs> The gym was created apparently to create uh, to celebrate Mr. and Mrs. McLean's very own wedding from the old adage, uh, something old, something new, something borrowed and something blue. I'm not sure if that's just a uh, UK kind of thing. I don't know if they do that anywhere else in the world. When you get married, the bride has to have something old on, something new, something new is usually the dress. Uh, something borrow, they borrow something from someone, a ring or something, and something blue. That's kind of a, a good luck thing for getting married. I don't know if that's sort of a thing in the other parts of the world. Maybe you could let me know. And it also says something blue is crisp and dry with some unusual notes, including rich caramel, soft fruits, almond, and fresh herbs. Now that's quite a curious little bunch of botanicals. So my friend, I think the fanny around part of the show is quite literally over, so let's get stuck right in. And indeed it does have a, a cork, so we know what that means. It's the Scottish cork test! The Scottish cork test! So do we have a squeak? It's so cold in here in the mornings, I can't get much purchase. Hang on a second. <sighs> right, there we go. Good bit of grip on there. Quick before it goes, it's got a squeak. Oh god, no, just a crack of my wrist. Ow. You can tell this gin's made in Scotland. Not for your great jesses down south who can you open the cork. I'll try again. Go for a squeak. No squeak at all. Good lord, it's gonna be a tough one today. Hang on a second. Here we go. Go for the full pull and go for the upwards grip this time. Come on. Ooh, not too bad. I thought it might have been a bit better than that, but never mind. It doesn't really matter. It's just a bit of fun. So then, sniff test coming up, my friends. Look at the cute little bottle. And it's it's kind of a sort of a a sort of a, a turquoisey sort of blue. Un unlike the old uh, sort of butterfly pea blossom blue, traditional blue gins like the good old Empress over there. So I'm guessing it hasn't got the butterfly pea flower in it. So I've no idea what caused it to go blue, but um, oh, well, let's, let's have a sniff and I was gonna say find out. We won't necessarily find out, but look, 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 good Lord, that's a long gabble today. Get on with it, Freeman. All right, nose going in, here we go. Oh, ooh. 
And as we know on this show, when I make a rather camp sounding noise like that, it usually is a good thing. But I tell you what, very, very unique. I don't think I've sniffed anything quite like it. And for a man who has sniffed many gins, a prolific gin sniffer, that's quite something. Do you know what? It's actually quite difficult to discern what I'm, what I am a sniffing. It's kind of a, it's kind of a, 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 a mysterious herby sort of smell with a, bolstered with a kind of a sort of enigmatic fruitiness. <laughs> Bear with me. But there is a kind of a whiff, a gentle sort of humming whiff of a sweet sort of, like they said on the thing, a kind of a caramelly sort of essence to it. So I'm not sure. I don't know what to think of this. I'm genuinely perplexed. So I, I say we get the old tonic in the glass and bloody well find out what it tastes like. So here we go. And of course, at what ABV is it? Let me check one second. I think it's a little bit weaker than usual. It's 39.5. That's 59. Yeah, 39.4. I haven't got my contact lenses in today. 39.4, which is a little bit weaker than we would usually expect with the London Dry, but it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter because we've had some beautiful ones at that sort of uh, ABV, so it doesn't really matter. Does it go pink like the other ones? Mm, it does actually go a slightly sort of, a very, very slight tinge of pink, but not really, it's, I'd, I'd say mostly, but really it goes clear. And by the time you've done a full gin and tonic, it'll probably be completely clear. Good Lord Freeman, get on with the damn tasting. Right, here we go. McLean's uh, Something Blue Gin, I say to thee, Cheers. Oh! <laughs> good, good, good Lord above. Wow. Oh, it's still going. It's still going. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, gin lovers. So sit back down, calm yourselves. Hold the phone and shut the front door, all that, whatever, whatever the kids say. This, my friends, as a man who tastes a lot of gins, that is extremely unique. And it's very, very nice, by the way, before you if you're on tender hook, especially the people who made the gin. <laughs> I have never, in all my years, or two and a half of them, <laughs> <laughs> experienced a sort of a length and a drawn out kind of flavour journey and sensation after you've sipped it. It's literally still going now. That's about sort of 50, 20, 20, 25 seconds, 20, 20, 25, <laughs> about 30 seconds later. It's still rumbling and rolling on. And it's kind of a, it doesn't taste like any, any gin I've ever tasted. It's very, let me have another go. Hang on. Okay, 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 here we go. So first of all, oh God, <laughs> it's amazing. So first of all, you get like a beautiful kind of, it hits the lips, right? And it's like sort of a wave crashing against the ocean where it sort of hits, so a wave crashing against the ocean? A wave crashing against the rocks, okay? It hits the rocks and goes, bam, straight upwards. So that, that sort of upward spray to me, it's a beautiful kind of sweetness, but not like a sugary artificial sweetness, kind of a, uh, almost a, a forest fruity kind of sweetness, a natural sort of, yeah, fruitiness, a fruity sort of spray going straight upwards. But just as that sort of spray hits the sort of crescendo, hits its sort of, uh, what is it, terminal height, velocity, I don't know, because it gets to the top. In the same way that fireworks, sometimes you get those silent ones that go up and go whoosh, and you go crackle like that. You get like a crackle on top of sort of, oh, just a hint of sort of spiky sort of, um, what's the word, spiciness, spiciness, just a tiny little crackle there, but then it's gone. Then, as it all subsides, I hope this is making sense, you don't, you don't, this is not the sort of traditional way of describing drinks, is it? But I think it, it, it kind of works for me, and I hope it does for you too. After it subsides, it, you're kind of left with a, a mist, which is flavoured with kind of this, like it said in the description, a beautiful sort of caramelliness, and it's left lingering it's leaving sort of a, a beautiful caramelly sort of sweet voluptuous sort of legacy i know i know i know this sounds all very pretentious if you're watching this video for the first time first time on my channel that's probably going to sound pretty weird but i you know i'm trying to paint pictures in the air i don't like to sort of just sort of tell you it tastes of this 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 and this that's boring let's 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 sort of give you the experience my lived experience that's the sort of buzzword of today isn't it that's my lived experience of this gin but yeah it is just so protracted and drawn out it's like 
you can sort of have a sip and it will last you for a good few minutes. You can just take a little bit of a sip and just sort of sit down there and just sort of go, okay, here we go, enjoy the ride. So then let's try it neat because I'm getting quite good at remembering these days. Straight out the bottle, here we go. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, again, I don't think any, I'm not getting a half back, but oh, actually, yeah, yeah, here we go. <laughs> it's still that same protracted sort of, um, sort of drawn out sort of journey of flavors, but to me, not, feel like they're slightly muted. They're not sort of singing as much as they did when um, combined with the tonic to release those flavors. So again, I reckon it's one that definitely to be drunk, hoy the tonic. So then, gin lovers, let's find out, are you going to have to pay an extortionate price for this rather incredible little journey that I just went on? Well, I can confirm to you, my friends, you are not because this gin comes in under my, you know, as I said before, the smaller distilleries and lesser known, which, of which this definitely falls into the bracket because it's only five years old. It comes in at a very healthy £37.95, pence, which works out at about $52.79 and €43.98, which is just under my £40 bracket. And I'm very pleased about that because I thought being such a small distillery, they might have to charge a bit more to actually make any money. And also, I thought, but look at the rather sort of squat looking bottle. I thought it was going to be a, a 50 CL one, but it's not that they've actually crammed 70 CL into there. So not like some of these uh, sort of, uh, you know, sort of um, conniving gin companies that put it in the 50 one and charge the same price as 70 CL. So I am very happy to play that. Very happy indeed. And I, in fact, you know what I say to my friends at McLean's in their, in their cupboard in Scotland, even though they don't produce it anymore, keep up the good work. So then guys, to sum up, I keep saying this at the beginning of every video, it, it, I'm always being surprised, even this far in. I, I you know, I, I, I got this gym and I looked at it and I thought, hmm, you know, the colour isn't really sort of screaming to me as something that, it looks like it kind of could be mouthwash or something. Again, I don't know what make, makes the blue in there, maybe the, the people could let me know. But Honestly, honestly, for something, for, for especially some of me who, who has tried and drinks a lot of gins, it's so incredible to have something that's not just unique, but totally, completely far removed as, as, as an experience, as a gin tasting experience as this. It's truly awesome. And that's why um, I think it's important to try these lesser known gins, even though you guys, I know a lot of you guys won't be able to get hold of this yet. Write it down. Keep a note, just tattoo it onto your arm or something. I don't know, I don't care. Just make a note of it, this one. And when it makes it to you, which hopefully it will do at some point, or if you're ever in the UK, this has got to be on your list because it is a truly unique little experience and I love it. I love it. So guys, if you've enjoyed this video, if you found it entertaining, if it's enriched your life immeasurably, then please, as always, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, press the little like button on the video and the uh, bell icon so you get notified when my new videos come out. And if you want to support the show like good old uh, Bailey Davies did, then don't forget to head over to the Patreon page or click the join button below the video. But until next time, guys, you know the drill. Take care, stay safe. Thank you to all my patrons and members. And of course, keep drinking the gin.